some familiar faces and, and names on here. Um, so it's great to, to see you all again. Uh, my name is Keith Hines. I'm the campus recruiting manager at, at Cohn Resnick. Uh, so my role at the firm is I, I oversee our campus recruiting strategies for, for all of our offices. Um, I am filling in for, for Taylor today um, who, who did oversee our, our New York metro area. Unfortunately, she just recently left the firm. Um, I previously oversaw our New York metro area prior to getting uh, promoted to, to manager. So definitely very familiar uh, with the school um, and all the offices and locations, obviously, in, in that area. So um, for today, um, I know we had planned on talking about uh, networking. So um, I'm gonna have a presentation. Um, I think that, you know, you know, we'll, we'll walk through that, but really I wanted to hopefully be as conversational as possible. Um, so if you have questions as we're going through, comments, anything like that, please feel free to unmute yourself. I have the chat box up as well. So if you don't want to unmute yourself and just want to chat, you know, I'll definitely answer questions, um, you know, as we're going through. I also will apologize. I, I have a cold if you can't tell from my, my voice. My, my son's sick. That's what happens when you have, have kids that go to daycare. Uh, they, they come home and get you sick too. So um, I apologize if, uh, for, for my voice and if I'm, I have to blow, <laughs> blow my nose or anything during this, but um, we'll, we'll get through it. So can you all see my screen? All right, awesome. So like I said, we're gonna talk about networking today. I think that we're, we're at an interesting point um, through you know, COVID here and, and everything where we are starting to, even as you guys can see some in person, it's gonna be some virtual. So I do wanna address kind of both situations, both scenarios the best I can. Um, and so if you have questions geared towards one or the other, I'm more than happy to, to answer them for you. All right. So I guess that's as uh, to, to kind of kick us off, um, who enjoys like networking and going to career fairs and, and things like that? Does anyone like actually enjoy doing that? Looking at, at heads. No one, anyone. I'm going to assume that the silence means no one really enjoys talking in front of other people or going to networking events or career fairs or things like that. So um, I guess this is where I'll ask you then what you what you don't enjoy about networking and doing career fairs and, and, and those types of things. Uh, you can't be quiet the whole time. My voice isn't ready for that. I'll go first. Um, also, All right, I don't know if you're sharing your screen, but I don't think we can see it. Oh, really? Well, thank you for letting me know. Um, but I would say that as far as career fairs go, I think the hardest part is making sure that like you get time in with all the recruiters that you want to talk to and like making sure that you're making an impact with your elevator pitch so that you stand out compared to other people. So elevator pitch, making sure you stand out. Yeah, career fairs, like obviously, you know, companies, firms are going to be meeting and talking to a bunch of different people, right? So how do you how do you stand out? So we'll definitely talk about some of that. Cool. What else? What else makes us nervous or anxious or why don't we like career fairs or networking events? Any, uh, any other reason? that, like, if we have it in person here in school, the competition, because we have to line up in every table. So it's always like a competition who's going first, who gets to talk first. And then it's also easy because you hear the person before you. So you kind of like learn and pick up the conversation and like kind of like join in. And, you know, it's like cheating, but at the same time, you're also learning. So I think the biggest thing with, you know, with that and, and thinking of it as a, as a comp, you know, I wouldn't necessarily think of it as a competition. I think that could cause obviously a little bit more stress, you know, for, for you. Right. So um, we'll kind of talk about, you know, 
prepping for it and, and, and really understanding what you want to get out of a career fair, I think it, it is definitely helpful. Yeah, what else? What else? Uh, anything else that ca causes you guys to be anxious or not enjoy networking or career fairs and, and things of those nature? So for me, I, I honestly, when I was in your shoes, I, I absolutely hated career fairs. Um, it's kind of funny to, to see where, where I am now and what my job is, right? I just, I talk basically to students for a living. Um, you know, I thought they were extremely awkward. I thought that, um, you know, it was always the, the tougher part actually for me was um, when to stop talking to people, right? And kind of that, this, you know, um, disengaged from the, the conversation uh, was always kind of awkward. So, uh, you know, I was definitely in the same boat as all of you. And so hopefully, you know, as we go through things today, we'll talk about tips that will hopefully make you feel a little bit more comfortable about, you know, doing these types of events and um, feeling better and more prepared going into them. And can you all see my screen now? I'm assuming so, right? Okay, perfect. So we'll start with the importance of, of networking. So why are networking and relationship development efforts important at all stages? Um, so <clears throat> one, it can lead to future opportunities. Um, it can help you learn about different opportunities and it allows you to market uh, yourself or your business. Obviously in your, your guys' case, a lot of the networking and type of a <clears throat> networking you'll do is obviously more around marketing you. Um, and like career fairs and, and things like that while you're in school. Um, when you get to get to work and you, you, um, you know, are employed by a company or firm, you know, some of the networking and your, your mindset around networking changes, right? You, you're kind of promoting more so your company and, and from my shoes, right? Promoting Code Resnick and, and uh, what we can offer. Um, so why is it important to start now? Um, you know, I think the, the big thing on here is, you know, to build your confidence, to prepare yourself for, for future networking efforts um, as you progress. Um, networking is a skill and anybody who's ever heard kind of my interview uh, tips presentation, you know, I, I talk about it there. Inter or networking is, is a skill. It's something that you can get better at. Um, it's something that you can <clears throat> learn to, to do better at. Um, you gain more confidence the more and more you do it and the more and more you practice. Um, so the more you do it now um, and what I would consider kind of like safe parameters in the sense that they're usually career fairs or specific events that the school holds for you where the main objective everybody knows, right? So if you're going to a career fair, you're really there to kind of market yourself um, to professionals and they understand that this is new for you. Um, so you shouldn't be shouldn't hopefully be too, too nervous. Um, and it's something that you'll continue to get, get better at. So the best way to start um, is, is with your current network, right? So you don't, maybe you don't necessarily think of these, you know, people as, as your network, um, but you know, your friends, your neighbors, different community groups, organizations on campus, um, for example, Beta Alpha Psi, right? You start with alumni groups, things like that, that hopefully, you feel comfortable with, um, you know, I always, I always think of like your friend's parents, right? You know, I never really cared about what my friend's parents did until I was like in college and looking for a job. Um, it's not something you necessarily think about, I think, as like you grow up, but you know, that's a part of your network, right? And, and be able to utilize them and, and learn kind of what they do, learn about, you know, maybe is there something, <clears throat> an opportunity they can present for you as well. Uh, so, you know, starting in your, your network that you already have, it should hopefully feel like a comfortable setting, should hopefully um, be somewhere where you feel comfortable talking about um, yourself um, and marketing yourself um, and, and really exploring different opportunities that could potentially come from that. So I think, um, you know, one of the, the biggest things with networking is really the first impression. Um, so here's kind of some, <clears throat> a little information on that, right? So first impressions formed in, in less than, less than 30 seconds. 
um, based on perception, how others see us and how, how we make others feel, right? So uh, I know this the first time I saw this, this table, um, I, was, I was kind of surprised by it, right? Um, and if you're looking at this, you know, I feel like you get so hung up on if you're at a career fair, you know, what you're going to say um, and, and making sure that you're saying the right things and that it's coming off right. And, and I think that is important. But, you know, at these career fairs, we're meeting with so many people. It is really tough for us to remember exactly everything everyone says. Um, and I know people get so worked up about being kind of like perfect with their elevator pitch or, you know, making sure they say the right things. Um, and really, you know, most of the time I'm remembering somebody because they were excited about talking to me, right? Their tone of voice, um, kind of how they presented themselves. And then maybe they'll mention one thing that kind of sticks in my, you know, sticks in my mind that I remember them for. Um, so I would definitely say, you know, keep that in mind when you're, you're going up to introduce yourself, to meet with somebody that a lot of that first impression really just comes from, from you and kind of the energy that you bring, you know, with you to, to that table. Um, so just you know, keep that in mind, always have a smile on, always be positive. Uh, I know career fairs can be long. Um, they can be draining, um, tiring. So, you know, every time though you're going up to meet somebody new, make sure you're, you're staying positive and, and bring kind of a positive attitude. Does this surprise you guys, this chart? No, it doesn't. I would have thought that tone of voice would have been a little bit lower, but I guess, I mean, 40% is. Really yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I agree with you. I think that, um, like I said, the first time I saw it, I was kind of surprised by it. I think, I think that was you, Michael, that mentioned that tone of voice. Um, but, you know, I think a lot of that has to do with like, you know, are you like actually excited to talk to me? Do you actually want to learn about Cone Resnick, right? Or are you just like, you know, going through the motions and monotone and I'm here because I have to be here for class and I have to talk to three tables, you know, so there's a lot that can be conveyed by, you know, the tone of your voice and like kind of the excitement that, that you have when you're talking to them. And it's kind of that energy that you bring, bring to the table. Great. Anything else about this? So <clears throat> I, I think that this is a, an awkward part, I think, for, for a lot of people is that initial, you know, starting to talk to somebody, right? Um, kind of breaking the ice. So we have some, you know, some, some tips here um, for you. Obviously, smile. This goes back to you know, the, your presence and the you know, kind of the energy that you bring to the table. I always laugh at this bullet point. Um, I didn't, I'll admit, I did not make this PowerPoint. So I, I use it though. Um, and I always laugh at this bullet point, make eye contact 60% of the time. And I'm like, who came up with that, that statistic that it's only 60% of the time. But I think the point is obviously you don't need to, you need to make sure you're making eye contact with them to make sure that you're showing interest, right? Are you interested in, in what they're talking about? Interested in who you're meeting with? Um, you shouldn't be looking around like you're not um, interested in what the person has to, has to say. Um, introduce yourself. Always use your, your first and last name when you're doing that. Um, it, it is really important to, to do that, especially at a larger event. Um, it does help to help the, the, the recruiter, whomever you're speaking with uh, to remember you. I have a really bad habit of not using my full name. Um, luckily, Keith, I guess, isn't the most common name in the world, but especially for those of you that might have a, a more common name, you know, definitely make sure you're using your first and last name uh, when you introduce yourself. You'll show interest. Um, again, we talked about that a little bit. Use a friendly opening. Um, we'll talk a, a little bit in another slide or two about, um, you know, your elevator pitch or kind of your introduction. Um, ask open-ended questions. Um, this is a really big and an important point, I think, that sometimes we overlook. Um, you know, asking open-ended questions allows you to engage in more conversation, 
right? So if you're asking simple yes or no questions, that's kind of where that conversation is going to stop, right? Um, the more you get the other person talking, the easier it, it makes it, especially if you're somebody who, you know, maybe a little bit more shy or introverted or things like that. Look for common ground. Um, again, this is somewhere where the open-ended questions and getting somebody to talk a little bit more is helpful. Um, oftentimes, professionals that are going back to the school might be alumni, alumni or things like that, or maybe they were part of Ada Psi, uh, maybe they were on the same sports team. You know, things like that that you can find out in just general conversation um, is always helpful. Uh, uh, or offer compliments. Um, yeah, I think that be mindful of this, obviously career fair might not be, um, the, the most appropriate place and be mindful of what, what you're saying. I'm a big watch guy. So, you know, if someone compliments me on my watch, I'll, you know, I'll start talking about it. Um, you know, things like that or shoes, you know, again, be mindful, make sure they're appropriate compliments. Um, hopefully I don't have to tell you guys that, but, um, you know, keep that in mind. So introductions, um, how would you introduce yourself to someone at a recruiting event or professional setting? Um, you know, make sure you're prepared. This is where we get into the whole elevator pitch, uh, you know, thing. So to be completely honest, I'm not a huge elevator pitch guy. Um, I don't think that you necessarily need an elevator pitch in the sense that you guys are trained on. Um, I think it can be very overwhelming when a student comes, walks up to you and tells you everything about themselves in the first 30 seconds of meeting them, okay? Um, I think that for me, you know, start with the basics. I mean, very simple introduction. I'm a, <clears throat> you know, I'm graduating with an accounting degree from FTU with 150 credit hours. Uh, in the fall of 2022. I, you know, and then maybe a little bit more about yourself, but I think everybody gets so hung up on, on memorizing this quick 30 second speech about everything that they've done in college. And it's like, and I was a part of Beta Alpha Psi and I was the president of that group and this group and I play football here and I do this. Right? And it, it's just so much that I'm only hearing a tiny bit of what you're saying. So, you know, keep it, keep it simple, I guess, is the, is the easiest way to describe it. By letting me know you're an accounting major, um, obviously, if we're at your school, I know you go to that school, right? So you could even probably lose that point. But if you're out somewhere else, you could obviously mention that you're from FDU. You know, let me know when you're graduating and maybe that you're, you know, evolved in one organization and, and that's enough. And we can continue the conversation from there, right? The reason I always recommend talking about when you're graduating is because it changes the mindset of what we're going to talk about, right? So if you're a freshman, as a recruiter, I'm going to talk to you about something completely different than if you were a senior looking for an entry-level job, right? So it's always good to make sure that you're including your, your class or your grade, um, I think, in, in the introduction when you're graduating, because I think that can tailor how the conversation goes. Um, I always think that it's helpful too for you when you come to a table or booth or whatever it may be to under, really understand why you're there and what you want out of it, right? And it maybe include that in your introduction. So let's say you are a freshman, right? So you come up to the table, introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Keith Hines. I'm a, I'm a freshman here at FDU. Um, you know, I looked at Cut Resnick's website. It doesn't look like they offer anything for freshmen, but you know, was there any advice you could give me as I move forward into my sophomore year, right? It's prompting for more conversation. I understand what grade you're in. I understand how our conversation is going to go. And then we can go from there. And I can find out maybe, you know, that you were a part of Adolph Society or the Accounting Society, or maybe you played football, right? You're going to hand your resume over. So I'm going to have all that information you would have rattled off in your elevator speech on a piece of paper in front of me. Um, so again, that's kind of my take on it. Um, I think keeping it simple is much better. Um, I know career centers and I typically disagree on it, but um, you do whatever makes you feel, whatever makes you feel most comfortable. Um, 
does anyone have like a an elevator elevator speech or do you guys worry about that or is this like an, an old, older thing that maybe is not as, as relevant anymore well in like my career strategies class they make us create a uh, elevator speech so it's still a thing in some of my classes so, so i guess for for that and like in your class i mean what are you you don't have to give me like your elevator speech, but like, I mean, what are the things like they tell you to include in that? Basically what you have there and like what we do is something to make us stand out. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah. I mean, I think the, and I, I think that's fine. I think, you know, you can call it whatever you want. If you call it an elevator speech or a value message or whatever, I think keeping it short and just be mindful like that you're talking to another human being, right? If you were out at a bar or if you were out to dinner or a party and meeting somebody new or in the first 30 seconds, are you going to like introduce your name and just rattle off everything you've done in college or, you know, everything about you? No, you know, you're going to have a conversation with somebody. Um, that's the same thing. That's how you should treat it at networking events. You know, we're, we're humans, we're people, we want to have a normal conversation with you. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind, keep it simple, you know, get kind of get to why you're at the, at the table there. Any other questions on this? So now that we kind of broke the ice, right, and we're starting to have our conversation, you know, starting to, to get into the conversation, um, you know, <clears throat> with the professionals, right, this is kind of where maybe some of us struggle a little bit, too, is to kind of how do we keep the conversation going, what should we talk about, you know, those, those types of things. So let's talk about that a little bit. So as I mentioned before, networking is a skill. Um, it is something that you can get better at, um, you know, talking to people, interacting with individuals. The more you do it, the more you feel comfortable with it. Um, you know, for me, I'm, I am an introvert. Uh, I, um, like, like I mentioned earlier, I absolutely hated going to career fairs. It like just sucked the soul out of me. It was awful. Um, I didn't like talking to complete strangers. It's just not a comfortable feeling. Um, but again, now I do it kind of as a, for a living. So you get used to it the more and more you do. Um, and the more and more you are prepared for it, the, the more comfortable you'll feel. So how do you, how do you get better at it? Um, become more social. Um, you know, put yourself, you guys are in a great, you know, <clears throat> great time uh, in your life where in I guess COVID aside, COVID might have made it a little bit more difficult, but you're starting to get on campus where you can put yourself in, in social situations, um, put yourself in something that you might normally feel uncomfortable with, right? Um, put yourself in those, those places where, where you're going to have to interact with maybe people you don't know, uh, and, and that will definitely help. Be a good listener. Um, so those, for, for those of you that are maybe the most talkative, um, a great way to continue conversation is by, by listening um, and being somebody who, you know, if, if you're talking to somebody that, that really enjoys talking or, you know, has, has a lot to say, right, listen to them, encourage, kind of ask those open-ended questions to can encourage them to kind of talk, you know, continue to talk. Um, the more you listen, the better you can be engaged and the more you can more simply continue the conversation. This kind of goes into the other part, encourage the other person to talk, right? Um, asking questions, ask those open-ended questions, stay away from uh, questions where you can get a yes or no response. Um, you know, it kind of, kind of immediately cuts the conversation a little bit short. Um, use body language to really express in, interest in the conversation. Um, understand when, when to speak and when, and when to listen. Be prepared. Um, so this is the biggest thing I think for, for the type of settings you all will, will be in when you're going to career fairs, you should really treat them as like mini interviews. Um, you should be going in 
with a, with a plan. Um, know the companies or the firms that you want to talk to. Do your research on those companies. Understand why you want to talk to them, right? So <clears throat> again, maybe maybe for Cone Resnick, you wanted to talk to them about a spe specific initiative that you saw on their website, right? Have, have a plan for why you're going to go to that, that table or that booth and, and be prepared to, to talk about those, those items that you had in mind. Um, it's like public speaking as well. You know, the more more you know about what you're going to speak about, the more comfortable you feel doing it, right? Um, so be prepared when you're going to talk to the firm or the company. Um, to that point, you don't need to talk to or meet with every single company at a career fair. Um, honestly, it's probably a waste of your time to do that. Instead, line up, you know, the four four or five, whatever amount of companies that you're actually interested in, that you're actually invested in, and really prepare to have good conversation with those companies. Um, it's definitely will be more worth your time. Um, and it's definitely um, a, a way to, to really make those conversations a, a little bit more manageable. Uh, model yourself after someone whose conversation skills you admire. Um, so I like I think if I were in your shoes, I would have thought that that was kind of weird. Um, I don't know. Does anybody like when I said that, like, well, does that like, do, do you guys immediately think of anybody that, that like is very good at like working a room or uh, very good in like public settings with like conversation and stuff like that? Can you think of anyone? I can think of someone. I know. Since freshman year, I had my mentor who trained me how to do the networking, you know, how to get rid of my mannerism with my hands, uh, getting rid of my arms, and really like thinking of the strategy on how to kind of like approach this company versus that company, like you said, and right. his conversation <laughs> skills I actually acquired um, over time, so it helped. Yeah, no, absolutely. Does anyone else have anyone like in mind that they they could think of that you know you potentially want to like mirror like their their man you know, <clears throat> their conversation skills? So it's an interesting to think thing to think about. Like I said, if I were in your shoes, I honestly don't know if I would have thought of anyone. I think the more and more I like have entered into like the workforce, the more and more I've noticed it. I think it is something you should look at, especially as you start internships and things like that, you'll probably see and work with more professionals. And there's a lot of good habits you can learn from individuals who have been networking for a long time um, that have been in, you know, in the workforce for a while. Um, there's two people that I immediately think of when, when, when I'm talking about this, one is of my prior firm CEO. I've never seen somebody work a room better than this guy work a room and make like meaningful and impactful conversations with like everybody he met with. Um, he's obviously trained um, being in the position that he's in, right? To, to, to have great networking skills. But um, just the way he was engaged um, was able to, you know, really, I, I think, have impactful conversations because he would get to get to know get to know a little bit about you very quickly and was able to kind of dig in very quickly um, on those things. So, you know, for me, I was in campus recruiting, and so like when I introduced himself to myself to him, um, you know, he immediately started talking about different campus recruiting ideas, and so like just playing on the commonalities that 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 you have and things like that. Um, so start to think, you know, start to, to look around and, and see if there's anybody who, you know, might have some good conversation skills that might have good networking skills that you could potentially pick up a few things, you know, from them and really learn from. Um, it, it, it is helpful um, and will help you down the road um, as you continue to do more and more networking. Uh, 
Um, and I'm like just looking at time. I want to make sure I had saved time for, for a little bit of Q&A at the end here. So um, <clears throat> just tips for developing rapport. Uh, we talked about a lot of these already. Um, the use of their name, I, I think, is, is important, too. And honestly, it's a great way to, to help you remember their name. Um, for those of you that are thinking I'm really bad with remembering names, like myself, I'm awful with it. I will typically, when a student comes and introduces themselves to me, I will typically repeat your name. Um, and that's kind of how I remember names is I have to like say them. So the more I say them, it, it's easier for me to remember. Might be a good tip for, for you guys as well. Seeking common, commonalities, um, again, is a great way to kind of drive conversation. So when to disengage, I mentioned this is probably was one of the more awkward things for me, right? It's like that moment where you're like, okay, did we talk long enough? Is it like, you, know, you get kind of that awkward, like, okay, is there anything else to say? Know that it's okay to leave kind of wanting that person to want, wanting to know more about you. Okay, think about the settings that you're in with a career fair. It really should not be, you know, any longer than like five minutes that you're talking to, to this person. Um, kind of keep them wanting more. You know, watch for signals though, right? So if somebody's looking down at their watch, they're looking past you, starting to like look around, you know, it's probably a good time to, to kind of disengage, kind of say your goodbyes, um, an X for, for contact information. I think this is sometimes for some students, just in my experience as a recruiter, sometimes tough for students to, to kind of get the hint almost, right? That, hey, I have a line behind you. I, I you know, we can't spend 10 minutes, you know, talking. Um, so, um, you know, kind of keep that in mind, look for the cues and, and again, be okay with, with having them wanting to know more about. Any questions on kind of disengaging from a conversation? Does anyone find that part to be like awkward? Yeah, Keith, I have a question. So pretend you're in our shoes and we're interviewing with you um, at a career fair. What are some things you might say if you were the student and you notice mm -hmm. that you might be like looking to the next person and wanting to talk to someone else because you might have like a big line behind? What are some things you might say as a student at the end of the conversation? So it's not awkward while you're walking away and like your, I guess your last impression isn't yeah, I, I think, uh, I mean, that's a great, <clears throat> great question. So I think there's, there's quite a few things you can say. And, and honestly, some of it might depend on the conversation that you're having, right? But if you feel, start to feel like that awkward, you know, you can feel, you, you get it, you get a sense of it, right? If you're starting to feel that and say, you know, I think an easy way is like, hey, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. I know you have, I know there's, you know, some other people wait in. Um, I don't want to keep, you know, want to keep them waiting any longer. Um, you know, happy to connect with you more. What, you know, do you have it? You know, can I have your contact information or what's the best way to, you know, get in touch with you to ask you any additional, you know, questions. Um, so I think potentially playing on the scene that you're in, right. And, and making it to me, that makes you kind of self-aware. Uh, in a sense that like, hey, I want to be respectful of your time and the rest of my peers' time. We talked for a while. I got a lot of my questions answered. You know, I want to, I want to make sure that you have the opportunity to talk to, to someone else. Um, but I want to continue to show my interest. So that's why I'm asking for, you know, the contact information, um, right? And, and how do I get in touch with you kind of after this conversation? Does that make sense? I think that's a, an easy way. Um, now let's say there's no one behind you, right? And you're like, you obviously can't say that if no one's waiting. Um, so I think, you know, um, honestly, just just thanking them for their time, you know, and saying, you know, really that was kind of the majority of my questions that I had for you today. Um, you know, I really appreciate you taking the time to come here and, and meet with us. Um, you know, if you have any other questions, I'm, I'm you know happy to answer them. If, if not, you know. Could I have your contact information um, to potentially, you know, reach out to you with any more additional questions that I might have? You know, something along those lines. But I think, again, simple, simple is kind of the, I guess, the general rule of thumb, right? You know, keeping these conversations as natural as, as you can. Um, 
and knowing that you don't need to talk like I, I feel like sometimes as a student you know if you have a professional you know there and you're talking to them you kind of feel sometimes like a tendency to like extend the conversation more than it needs to be if you got all your questions answered great then move on to the next you know move on to the next table it, it, you know it's okay you don't you don't need to you know continue to stay there and like search and press for like questions that you're like making up on the spot or whatever um if you got what you got and needed and that's why coming prepared is, is good you know if you got all your questions answered and you feel like you you spent enough time with them that's fine honestly it, it's better than kind of overstaying your welcome I guess you could say right and and just talking to them for you know 15 minutes about kind of pointless conversation um, so um, I think you know thanking you know big thing obviously is thanking them for the time making sure you're getting that contact information um, for how you can follow up potentially with them and a question yeah. To go along with that, has Cohen Resnick started to do um, in-person networking again and recruiting, or has it all been virtual? So we have been have been doing a little bit of both. Um, so <clears throat> that I believe this was supposed to be in person. I think that's my fault that it's not in person, honestly. Um, so we we are doing events in in person. Um, basically, what we're doing is following the school's lead. So depending on what the school school is doing, typically that's what typically that's what we're doing. Okay, and one last question. So no pretend problem. it's in person. Um, right so, now, like with the pandemic going on, I know some people like prefer to shake your hands. Some people don't. So like, how do you? So if you're in that situation, like, do you ask like, may I shake your hand, or do you assume to shake someone's hand? Because I've seen that happen a couple times in networking events, and I just don't want people to maybe like feel awkward, like in that situation or maybe like want them to know a little bit like what they might be able to do so this is a great question and i actually was talking about this with somebody in california earlier today because they're going to a career fair on um, on friday and they asked me about shaking hands and i said i you know what i never really really thought about that um <laughs> because so the last career fair i was at was at rutgers university and so like the size of this career fair was ridiculous. It was huge. And they implemented a policy, no sh like no shaking hands. And I thought that was absolutely ridiculous. Of course, it was February of 2020, right? Right before everything went, went, went wrong. And so like I was shaking people's hands and I'm like, great. No, I probably shouldn't have been doing that. But because um, it is awkward, but that's, but that's why I was doing it because I felt like it was awkward not to. I think it's, you know, at this point, it's a, I, I feel like it won't be as awkward, I guess. Um, I, I think that personally for me, if I was a student, I would, I would go to shake their hand. Um, if they don't, I, you know, I want to take any offense to it. I'm sure they'll say, oh, you know, I, I'd rather not. Like, I would honest, if you feel comfortable doing it, I would say it's probably better that you put it <clears throat> on the employer to say like, no, like it's okay. Like, or like, no, we're not going to shake hands or whatever the situation might be. But I honestly don't think I have a good answer for you on that. That's, I guess my best piece of advice for me personally, I'd probably shake your hand, but you know, that's my decision. And I don't know if everyone is, is going to be that way. So if you feel comfortable, I'd go for it. I don't think I'd give them like the fist, you know, I don't, I don't think that's, that's the best move, <laughs> the fist bump or the elbows or anything like that. I would go handshake or, or not. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Way when you, uh, next time you go to a career fair, keep me posted. Let me know how it goes. <laughs> Just let me know if you're shaking hands or not. Has anyone gone to like, gone to, I guess, have you guys had, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit removed from, from, the typical campus recruiting efforts here, but have you have you guys had a career fair like on campus or have it has it been virtual? There was a uh, career fair for like accounting and finance uh, about two or three weeks ago, and it was fully virtual. It was virtual still, yeah, that's what I thought. So, 
it'll be interesting to see once I feel like once it actually is in person, people are going to feel com- like people will probably feel comfortable shaking, you know, shaking hands. Um, but I guess we'll see. I, I really don't know. It's an interesting time. Uh, you know, interesting time we're living in, obviously, for these networking type of type of things. Um, I guess to that point with it being virtual, and I know a lot of what I've talked about, you know, really addresses, I think, both, you know, in person and virtual. I don't think there's much that you would do differently. But I guess, was there anything that you guys have come across being in a virtual setting that you felt was different or that you would like maybe advice on how to handle? Uh, what I notice is um, the questions asked during interviews or during networking is sort of different now. So sometimes when we meet virtually, the question is, where are you located at? When in person, you don't typically ask that because you're at the same area. So I guess with that, it's also a conversation starter because that person might have been through that area where you're living or where you are staying yeah. at. So it's, there's pros and cons. It makes it comfortable too, to like looking them up in LinkedIn beforehand and see any similarities that you can start talking about and then talk virtually and have like LinkedIn pulled up on the side as like a cheat sheet. But um, there, again, there's pro, pros and cons. Yeah. Anyone else? Anything else from <clears throat> from being virtual? Things you like, things you don't like, questions about it. I mean, I think that <clears throat> really, again, a lot of it you should be treating kind of the same way. Um, I think that there are, you know, there's some advantages and dis- definitely some advantages and disadvantages for sure, um, you know, with it being virtual. Um, but, you know, the general tips, I think, you know, <clears throat> kind of transfer between between both virtual and in-person. Um, so kind of the last, the last bit I'll touch on here, right? So now that you, you, you connected with somebody at a, at a career fair, kind of what's next, right? So just definitely make sure you're asking for their contact information. Um, you know, feel free to connect with them on LinkedIn, you know, really maintain that connection. Um, so <clears throat> the biggest thing I would say is making sure you ask how they, their preferred method of communication is. Okay. So for me, I'm like 90, I would say 99% more likely to answer you if you email me rather than LinkedIn message me. I like don't really check my like LinkedIn message messenger that much. Honestly, I know it's probably not the best thing to like admit to, but I'm really bad at it. Um, I, I really don't look at it too much. So if you actually like want to get in contact with me, it's probably better to email me. But, um, you know, if you, I, I, I would say, you know, making sure you're asking for that from the professional. Some people prefer LinkedIn. Um, so whatever, whatever their preference is, I would follow that. I think it's okay with anybody you meet with to request, like request to connect on LinkedIn. Um, I think that it's appropriate. Um, I would put in your <clears throat> connection message, like, Hey, it was great meeting you on, on campus or meeting you virtually, you know, through the, the meet the firms event or career fair, et cetera. Um, I think that is definitely helpful and it kind of reminds the person where they might have, have met you from. Any questions on that connecting with the employers? All right. So that's it. Um, yeah, I think overall, the, the main thing that I, I just would like to kind of reiterate for you guys with, with networking is just that being prepared um helps tremendously um practicing putting yourself in in situations maybe that you might not feel the most comfortable with and and working on your networking skills and working on connecting with with you know professionals and and i mean to practice that it it really can be putting yourself in, in situations where you're connecting with your peers right so people 
that that are in your class and, and things like that um, as a way to, to get more comfortable kind of breaking the ice, carrying on a conversation and things like that. Um, so um, definitely continue to, to, to do that, uh, especially as we get back to, to being on campus and, and those types of things. But um, yeah, I'm happy to answer any additional questions that you have, whether they be about networking or, or anything else, really. Um, I have a question. So a friend of mine pointed this out when he did um, in-person networking in one of the colleges in New York. And he said that since he forgot his um, business card, he used the, the QR code in LinkedIn to just connect with the person. Do you think that business cards in the little future um, soon will be irrelevant or still relevant? <clears throat> so you're saying for, uh, for, for students that have business cards? Yeah. Because we have business cards here at Silverman. So, I mean, I, I think that I don't necessarily think they're necessarily necess necessary for students, in my opinion. A lot of, you know, the contact information we're getting on your resume anyway. Um, is it nice to kind of have, I guess? Yes. Um, I would say depending on the setting you're in, right? So a business card would be great if I was there in person and after a presentation, you might not have a bunch of your resumes with you and you might just want to give your card, right? But at a career fair, you're usually walking around, you have your resumes, you have, you know, <clears throat> a folder full of them that you're handing out to, to, to professionals. I don't know if a business card is necessary in that setting. So I would just say, depending on your setting, um, they can be very effective, um, but in other cases, they might not necessarily be, be needed um, because your contact information is on your resume anyway. Does that make sense? Yes. That was another thing that was interesting was like, oh man, I need to go get business cards again because I haven't thought about getting business cards in almost two years. Very good. What other questions? Anything else I could answer for you? Yeah, so if a student's interested uh, in your firm, they want to learn more and maybe talk to you one on one, would you usually operate by like having a Zoom call or a phone call or how does that work? Like if I wanted to reach out to you and um, talk in the future about like more specific information, like on the firm, what do you guys do? Like how do you operate? So if you're interested, um, definitely email. Um, well, I guess in this case, me or your local recruiter. Um, and then potentially we could set up some more time to talk, whether that be via phone or we use Microsoft Teams um, okay. at our firm, you know, something something along those lines. Uh, yep. But I would say start with the, the email. Any other questions? Yeah, I have a question. So I know uh, since the pandemic, um, a lot of the interviewing has been done online um, with mostly like the second rounds being the Zoom meeting and the first rounds being like the pre-recorded videos. Um, do you have any tips for students on how to uh, successfully complete the pre-recorded interviews? Yeah, so actually ours are pre-recorded. Um, so <laughs> I've seen a lot over the past couple of years. I know they can be awkward. Um, and, and tough. Um, and so I guess as far as advice for that is, um, one, don't get yourself too worked up over it. They don't need to be perfect. We're not expecting them to be perfect. I think that everyone is so concerned with each re their recording being absolutely perfect and precise, and you need to not fumble over your words or, you know, whatever that, that situation is. That's not the case. Um, I think oftentimes the, the people that are most successful are the people, honestly, that probably re-record themselves a fewer amount of times. Um, we don't want you to be rehearsed. We don't want you to be scripted. So don't write down a response. Don't read it off your computer. It's extremely obvious. Even if you're trying to hide it, we can tell. 
when it's a rehearsed answer. Um, for our video recorded interviews, we give you unlimited opportunities. And I always wonder if we shouldn't, because I think that's where you guys get so so hung up on it, needing to be needing to be perfect. Um, but I think, you know, really listening to the question, think about how you're going to respond and, and respond. Um, and, and just really be um, be thoughtful. You know, think about if you were in a normal interview setting, you're not going to get a chance to, to re-record and re-record and re-record, and, and that's okay. Um, <clears throat> for ours as well, um, I would say there's nothing really that, for ours, that's like tricky. Um, ours is really trying to understand more so about you and, and why you're interested in the position. So really understand that um, and really understand why you're looking for an audit in, let's say an audit internship at Cone Resnick, right? Why are you interested in, in audit? Why are you interested in Cone Resnick? Why are you interested in getting into public accounting? And really think about those things. Um, as far as other tips, just kind of common tips for the, the recorded thing, you know, make sure you're having good eye contact. Keep in mind what's in your background. Um, you know, make sure it's appropriate, obviously. Um, positive energy, you know, put a smile on your face, even though it might be awkward. Um, you know, sound enthused. I'll, with video recording, and this is the same for one-on-one -on -one interviews that are virtual, there's an extreme focus basically from here up, right? They can't see the rest of your body. And it's like extremely zoomed in on your face. So your facial expressions really show during interviews and video recorded and, and just one-on-one -on -one virtual interviews. Um, so just be mindful of your facial expressions as well as you're, you're responding to questions or, or talking to somebody. Um, but yeah, I guess there's a, a couple, couple of tips. Anything else on that? Was there anything in particular about video recorded interviews? All right, what other, any other questions? Yeah, I got a question. So say uh, you're at a career fair and you're talking to a recruiter. After you talk to them in person, is there like a specific time you should like follow up with them or does it not really matter like if you follow up with them, you know, like the day of or like a week later, a month later? I would try to follow up the following, <clears throat> by the following day. Okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wait any longer than that. I don't think you need to like be walking out of the career fair and following up with them. Like, I think that's a little much, but by the next day, I think that that makes sense. Um, I would not wait much longer than that, honestly, because they're going to meet a, a ton of different students <clears throat> that day. Um, so the sooner you can kind of get, get in front of them again, the better. Um, I would also say typically kind of just speaking from the back end, right? So if you're, if you meet with one of our professionals on campus, Typically the next day, we kind of reconvene and talk about how it went, whether any students that we were interested in, et cetera. So putting your name out in front of them again um, is, is not a bad idea. Um, so, you know, maybe it's that night or the next morning, something like that. And along with his um, question, do you think it's a good idea if after um, we speak to a recruiter, maybe that night or the next day when we're thanking you, to basically give like a little spiel about us again, give like another introduction, or should we give like other information that we maybe forgot to mention just so like we can stand out? Um, I think um, as far as that goes, I think mentioning, you know, making it specific to that, that recruiter, that person you spoke with, right? Like when you're thanking them, similar to like you would for like an interview almost, like, oh, it was really great meeting you and talking about X, Y, Z. Um, you know, I you know, maybe apply, you know, I, I just applied for the role. I'm literally looking forward to, you know, next potential steps. Um, I don't think you necessarily need to say more. If you want to maybe attach your resume, I think that's not a bad idea. Um, that'll kind of remind them of, of maybe who you are a little bit more too.
what else? I answer everything. You guys are taking it easy on me. <laughs> I think that's it. We don't have any more questions from the classroom. Sounds good. All right, awesome. Well, I appreciate you all joining. Um, hopefully this was was <clears throat> was helpful. Hopefully, you know, you can at least take one thing away, you know, from this conversation today and kind of implement it into when you're networking or meeting with, you know, other people, other firms, other companies, things like that. Um, if you have any additional questions, uh, don't feel free to reach out to reach out to me directly. Um, if you're interested at all in, in Cone Resnick, our opportunities are posted on our website. Definitely feel free to, to check them out um, and apply. Um, but it was, it was great speaking to all of you and uh, have, a, have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.